Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Albion Online with your host, Black Boa here. Today, you're in for a treat. Uh, this build right here is the Blight Staff. I affectionately call it Blighty Delighty. It's so delightful. I hope to show you how this build will work in the mists. I've enjoyed using it, and hopefully you guys will see the thought process behind this build as well. So the Blight Staff, it is part of the Nature Staff line. And if you've seen my other build guides, you would have heard me repeat this comment constantly that mobility is king. So when you think of a nature staff, you don't really think of mobility. However, there is one staff to rule them all, known as the Blight Staff, which actually does have a little bit of mobility on top of whatever mobility we are gaining from our passive. For our purposes of PvP in the solo miss, we're using Thorns. This is an amazing skill. You can cast it three times in quick succession. It lands on the ground and it begins to deal magic damage to its enemies, as well as apply Thorn Charges, which can be extinguished through auto attacking the target, dealing additional bonus damage as well. Uh, the thorns act as a slow. The slow here is definitely nice. It does not stack on top of each other, so if you stack three right away, it's not going to deal more damage. The second ability here, which is a very much DPS ability, is called the Bramble Seed. Just about every other ability in this W slot is some form of healing or protection or cleanse. However, for PvP purposes, if we actually want to get kills, we are combining consistent damage of thorns with the burst damage of bramble seed not only does it deal damage as it hits somebody 226 magical damage but after a short delay thorns pop out of the ground dealing another massive 679 magic damage and it knocks people in the air so this is a nice cc for us one cc on this one cc on this it's good even though we're not known for moving as long as we can slow people down that's a good thing and last but not least what i was really excited about was this particular e called the elevated nature not only does it heal, and not only can it not be interrupted because it's a uninterruptible channel, but this is the key here. It gives you 15% move speed for 6 seconds while you're channeling. You can cancel the channel early by clicking the E button again, and you will lose that move speed as well. I've used this E not only as a way to kite and heal myself in the process, but also as an aggressive tool to try to catch up with people if they're running away from me. Casting Sprint plus this will give you a fair amount of movement speed, and if it just so happens to be the sixth spell cast, you'll even get additional movement speed here of 20% for three seconds. We're using this hit and run to give us even more mobility. We are using a cloth chest piece, the mage robe, because it has the highest physical attack and magical attack bonus out of all of the regular cloth robes. Your main reason for using it is using frost shield like I am. Frost shield is not only a minor reflect, it, it reflects 15% of damage, but it also increases my damage resistance fairly heavily by 90 and it also slows the target that is hitting me so this ability here will allow me to build distance especially against curse staffs and especially against axes this is really good against curse against axes or against anyone who is using dot damage so we're going to be using the increased damage on the aggression we are default using the force field here which is our knockback it's always good for kiting and getting people away from you kiting play style with certain weapons and this is what makes it possible. It knocks people back by 9 meters. And of course, I always enjoy using the plate boots mainly because of rejuvenating sprint. Healing is just king. If you can get it anywhere, you'll probably want to use it, and hence that's why we're using this. However, Wanderloss is nice to have as a light staff as well. Coupled with our E, it should give us a nice little movement speed boost. So if we ever want to use this to try to track someone down, we could also change to that. Our Thetford Cape, of course, is always used for consistent damage. Because we are trying not to be close to people. I didn't want to use the Avalonian cape, which could have been a good alternative. You could also use an undead cape, but the reason I didn't use undead here is because I'm a cloth chest piece user. We have the energy cost reduction food, as well as the cooldown reduction we get with the dust hole crab omelet. And last but not least, we have a nice healing potion to give us additional healing on top of our healing that we get. You basically want to use this staff against certain matchups. You don't necessarily want to go against like other matchups, but yeah, this is a pretty strong build. I would say for Corrupted as well. All right, so I think we explained the build pretty well here. All right, we're almost ready to go. We just got to select our mist, but first a word from our sponsor. Are you wondering where to go if you like mist content? Are you wondering what city Mavros Boa is in right now? Well, look no further. This is the city of Breslin. Get 50,000 standing by doing mists. Find the Breslin portal and you could be here as well. Once you enter Breslin, you could transport anything you'd like through the fast travel system. You may also decide to look at the brand new Breslin standing 
vending vendor. You will buy all wonderful things that you will enjoy for many, many, many times to come. Make sure you sell at the marketplace so the marketplace becomes more saturated. And of course, missed responsibly. Thank you very much for that sponsored segment there. And let's get back into the miss, shall we? All right, as always, eat your food. Never want to forget to eat your food, you know, otherwise you're screwed. So one thing to immediately notice is that the Blight Staff is quite possibly the best TVE solo weapon in the game. As we go through clearing these outposts, as we go through uh, clearing some of the, the Nightfall Abbeys, you will see that uh, we will be able to reach max stacks in the Abbey, 15 stacks by clearing, because this is just such a fast way to clear. But yes, if you are here to grind Might, if you're here to grind PvE, immediately you're going to love the Blight Staff because it is quite possibly the best weapon in the game for solos for PvE. Bro, you really want to, he really wants to fuck with me, eh? Okay, let's do this. Nature versus nature here. I'm curious to see how this is going to play out. Okay, he actually uh, is annoying me right now. baby shit Damn, bro. What the fuck? That's annoying as hell. But I think he can't get away. What the fuck am I doing? I'm misplaying this so bad. Actually terrible. That was huge. Oh, fuck, this guy's actually fucking annoying me really badly. This guy's actually fun. I like this guy. He's doing good. GG. Whoa, what the fuck? Ow. GG, bro. God damn. Right, I wasn't expecting him to be that difficult, but he was good. We were definitely interested in that fight for the main reason that... So he was still using a nature step, but not a blight step, which means he had inferior mobility to me. He did have a nice kit there that actually was punishing me. He definitely had reflect. He had the everlasting spirit. He, he pretty much had more damage than I did. But because I had more sustain and speed, I was able to move in and out away from his damage as it came in. No matter what nature staff you use, you should always be kiting initially, especially if you're using the brambles. It has a really good ability 
ability to punish people who try to chase you. But that was a very, very good fight. I enjoyed that. He, you could tell he was a good player. He definitely was dodging a lot of my skills. That's how you would fight another nature staff, especially one with less mobility. Maybe if they don't have high mobility, I could always change to purging shield, right? If their mobility is low, I could probably go purging shield, because then I could purge something of theirs and maybe even their run. Because like, think of it this way, right? Like, if you're a 6.1 trying to fight an 8.3 and they're wearing a certain build, you technically know how to fight the build they're wearing. But when, like, it doesn't matter if they take damage or not just because they're out gearing you, they're playing in a way that no other person would play if they had lesser gear, right? It creates like a false play style. Pretty much if you were fair IP, you know how to fight it, but it doesn't matter if it's 8.3, 8.4, because they're just going to fucking run through everything and just run you down, which is really the biggest problem, I think, of having 8.3s, 8.4s in here against people like 6.1s. It's just a terrible interaction. This guy using a sickle or using vile curse on me. Uh, I might be willing to try this. Oh no, he's using a fucking shadow collar. Alright, so on this we just outrange him basically. That's all we gotta really worry about is we have the range. I don't wanna use my sprint, but I'm going to. Really, bro? You don't wanna fight this? to get rid of these okay ah shit so we made it out alive there i don't think we would have if he was using just a regular one hand curse staff he was using a shadow collar which is really odd to see however the length of his cc was actually incredible he was rooting me for a long time that plate chest and whatever else he was using uh, definitely got me rooted for quite some time so he definitely can get that combo off the shadow collar combo uh but we did have distance on him because he was using vile curse he was not using the curse sickle and so we were kind of able to volley a little bit if the other guy didn't come i think i could have won eventually but if you guys didn't notice one of the one of the key things that happened there was this when you're fighting a uh, when you're fighting a curse staff especially frost shield is amazing because every time they dot they're getting slowed hence you're building distance so they can't keep dotting you in addition we also use this effectively knocking them back so they can't keep dotting us so really we we played parts of that well i think i did take too much damage overall i wasn't very good at uh dodging his roots i don't think we're overpowered necessarily mm. Mm. can i fight this i can actually all right let's let's tr this is going to be a difficult one but i guess we could try it go bro i'm down probably gonna die here okay so this guy's an axe we got to be very careful here we need to be very very careful here because our health is very low and uh, that would not be good to uh, get smoked in that regard. Okay, that's a little bit. Fuck. He doesn't want any of it. What's up, baby? 
You don't like this? You don't like it? Por qué? He's actually running now. I don't think this guy wants anything to do with it so we definitely can hold our own against that that guy was at least 200 ip ahead of us all we have to do is every time he freaking dots us with a bleed pop our immediately every time he gets close with the leap combo that he was doing battle rush the moment he starts swinging uh, his axes and stuff we just pop him with a d we we knock him away uh and then of course we build distance with the slows and the bramble Pretty much we had that guy covered. The only problem is we would not have enough mobility to probably catch the guy. We'd have to put ourselves in a death scenario in order to bait him in because he actually has the advantage in mobility. So that's how you would fight a battle axe. I'm not really worried too much about them if I play it like that. Here's a Nightfall Abbey. All right, so in the Nightfall Abbey, Nature Staff reigns supreme in terms of stacking the buffs. We actually stacked 15 buffs, which is the highest. We actually tried to see how high it went. We actually probably got closer to 20, but the highest it went was 15. So just, just know if you want to be a freaking Super Saiyan stacker, pretty much use this Nit Blight Staff and you'll clear these camps like nothing. Get all the stacks and then you probably will have a huge advantage against people in here. So consider that, that we become very strong because of our clear speed in the Abbey. And that could mean, you know, the ability to kill people who we have no business killing. Okay, I can take this guy. Shit. Actually, does he have... Yeah, he does have shadows. And he's running now <laughs> and that's how you that's how you counter that guy right i basically just canceled his whole uh healing well not all of it but a lot of it this guy actually could be kind of scary Went a little bit too close there. Oh, this guy's so fucked now. Later, baby. So see, you pretty much can counter melee pretty damn well with this kit. Oh shit, the fuck is that? Thank you. 
come on now. It's an auto attack and this guy's ours. The juicy one too. No you don't, buddy. Oh wow. Oh wow. Nice. Alright, very nice. That is 2.2 mil right there, Chad. I think we go deposit. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so we got lucky there. We uh, we ratted that situation clearly, but we actually played it quite well. Um, stopped them from regening by hitting them initially. Hit every single bramble almost that we needed to. Slowed them down with some thorn charges, and then ultimately just auto attacked and got the uh, got the kill there. Uh, but yeah, nature staffs are pretty good rats. I've ratted an 8.3 set before from a similar situation. Absolutely a good weapon for that type of gameplay as well. But outside of that, I think this is a great piece of content. Really fun for solo players. You can gather every single resource, every resource is available. So it doesn't matter what tool you, you use, you'll find something to gather. I have a feeling that he's going to wait until I start and then he's gonna to try to gank me. Um, but if you are very careful with this, you should be able to avoid most of the damage. So let's, let's give it the old college try here. Jump. Okay. I wait for the first jump, then I can attack again. Second jump is incoming. You keep moving so that it misses. Now he's going to do the freeze again. I bop it. He's going to do a jump again really quickly. You hit that. The second jump is going to come shortly. Here it comes. Freeze again. And we're almost done with this bad boy. There we go. Bam. 200k. Easy. So even if someone did come there, we would have been 100% prepared because we did the PvE appropriately. I can't say enough about taking PvE seriously, especially when you're in the mist, and especially if you're in an outpost, right? If you're doing PvE in an outpost and you're not paying attention, like someone can come in and just one-shot you if you're very low, or it'll cause you not to mount up. So take it seriously. Could be the uh, difference between life and death. Uh, can you try, can you by any chance give you silver? Uh, I cannot give you silver, but uh, I can help you learn how to make silver. Why do you have no silver? Like, do you not know how to make silver? Did you use something too expensive for your level? Are you not living within your means? If so, call the Black Boa Financial Network today and we'll tell you how to make money in Albion Online. For only five easy payments of $299.99, you will learn how to make money using our sponsor, AO2D. That's the link right there for AlbionOnline2D.com. And with their wonderful metrics on economic data, you will become an Albion millionaire and perhaps an Albion billionaire. There is a system in this game called the Black Market, and it, it acts as a marketplace. It's located in Carolina. Leone. It's only in Caerleon, the city, uh, the city in the center of the Royal Continent, and pretty much it, the game does buy gear from players. But the but the gear that it buys, it's not destroyed. It's put back into the economy uh, as a potential loot drop. But pretty much every other marketplace does not operate that way. Every other marketplace is supply and demand via players. But the black market is the only game run market that actually will be the game buying items from you. Oh. Bowie. Oh, I missed. Not good. I missed. Ah, nice job. Wow. Good on him. If I just freaking hit that last, uh, that last bramble, I think I could have had that, but fuck. All right, so let me, let me go over that fight. I'm just trying to think of a lesson learned there. So... All right, number one, bows are a bad matchup for us. They probably have better mobility, especially since they use their frost shot. 
it's not a great matchup. If we had an assassin jacket, maybe we could have done a little bit better against a bow like that. Usually fighting a bow, I'm not that worried, but like, you know, assassin jacket can literally negate a big chunk of whatever they're trying to do, especially with the merc jacket. Um, I didn't make enough distance on uh, a couple of occasions. I should have just kept running, thinking that he was going to double back. Uh, a big part of what I was doing there is trying to be close enough to secure a kill, but when you do that, you're taking damage. Um, and I just should have played it the normal way I play it. He got away, he got away, at least I didn't die, you know. Because I tried to play it a little bit more risky to maybe secure the kill, uh, it, it ended up biting me in the butt. You know, they are definitely a tough matchup though. Any bow, war bow, badan bow that you see in the mist is probably something you don't want to mess with as a blight staff user. Hi guys, Black Bow here. Thanks so much for watching my latest video. If you like what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. I truly appreciate it. Thanks bros, and I'll see you next time.